lose an hour here or there and not know what they were doing. Uh, that's common. Uh, joint pain is common. Um, loss of energy is common. These things are very common. And then outside of that, we have people with some very strange, I would say, sci-fi uh, kinds of events going on uh, around them and in their bodies. Well, Dr. Scott, you know, that what you've just uh, described is what a lot of us were going through prior to the Christchurch quake when they were spraying so heavily. And, uh, you know, at the time, I mean, my brain fog was just incredible. I, I couldn't believe that, 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 you know, what I couldn't remember. My, even right now, my daughter, my teenage daughter, is very concerned about my level of memory. I can't remember important things from her childhood. And um, these are, you know, these things are very distressing to us. Uh, before the quake, uh, we had probably a year of serious, serious spraying uh, as they practiced over us. So, um, thank you. We know that uh, we're, we're not in it alone. Uh, you know, whether we're symptomatic or not, all of us should be taking this very seriously. Absolutely. I have uh, two clients in Australia who have reported very l lately, very strange and unusual chemtrails. One told me that uh, after the chemtrails, it rained bright orange. Uh, who knows what that was? And another one on a different part of uh, Australia called me and said the chemtrails were bright pink in nature. Ye so I think yes. there's a lot of experimenting going on. Very much right. so. Uh, we have per permanent barium skies now. And... Uh, you know, um, we had yellow rain after one of the quakes, one of the big quakes. We had this yellow powder fall from the sky, Dr. Scott, and that this was very concerning because the same yellow powder appeared um, over Japan after the radiation, and then it appeared again. Andrew Bridgman from California Skywatch reported it in California when they started spraying after the radiation event at Fukushima. Mm -hmm. Well, I've always said to people from the beginning of this, and... I couldn't wake people up, but now there's this user awakening. I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. But when people, when someone owns your air supply, they own you. Anything you breathe in is systemic to your whole body in less than a minute. And there's no oversight on this. They can change the mix. They can experiment here and there with anything they want. And we're constantly behind the eight ball, kind of running to catch up to find out just what a few of the things uh, but as you said, you know, they can deliver uh, anything at any given time, and we're just sitting up. So hopefully we can get folks, uh, more and more folks aware that this is very serious. We're in great peril. Um, but again, not to be in a state of fear, because there are some very good things that we can do. I should say, too, uh, very fascinating, the same research doctor with the atomic microscope called me one day and he said, you know what, we shouldn't be alive. And I said, well, yeah, I kind of concur. <laughs> with their, they're shooting at us with everything they've got. And he said, no, I'm, I'm talking about, he said, back in the day when I worked in the laboratory with mice, when we wanted to put them down humanely, we gave them 20% oxygen, 80% carbon dioxide, and he said they went to sleep. He said, we're working off less than that right now, less oxygen than that. So there's miracle here too, folks. And I don't want to give too much power to, you know, um, folks who are, they never, they never, you know, they, yeah, they're having their little dance right now, but it, it always falls apart and it never holds up and, and we have to stay in the light and not, not in a state of fear. So I say these things while I'm putting out some very difficult information so that we don't get so bogged down that we can't remember. Uh, that, that, that there's very powerful forces mitigating miracles happening every day, the fact that we're um, walking and talking with all of the insult, and not just from the chemtrails. When we go back, at, I can speak in this country, the fluoridation of our water, the alteration of our foods, the poisoning of our foods, on and on and on. This, this campaign is, the, 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 the chemtrails are just the, the, the most recent coup de grace, but... You know, this goes back a long way, and yet so many people are still standing. It's pretty amazing. 
You know, along those lines, I was wondering if maybe we could talk about what you know about the composition of the pseudo-life forms or, or fibers, okay. as some people call them. And, you know, in my research, I just found a couple of things on rents.com. Um, one was the researcher Ahmed Kalani says that he was able to break down two fiber samples and extract their DNA, and he found that they belong to a fungus family. And then the second one was an even more provocative finding, um, is that a biochemist um, was able to discover that the, the fibers contained a substance called agrobacterium, which, according to new scientists, is, is a commercially used product in genetically modified plants. So, you know, his question was, could GM plants be causing a new right. human? Yeah, which, well, he I causes mean, opinion, calls it disease, but, but yeah, go ahead. Opinion, that is a red herring again. See, whenever people get on... They are really good. They're good. Um, that one's been thrown out there quite a bit, but it doesn't meet the criteria. Um, it doesn't meet the criteria. It just doesn't. Because, you know, and, and we can go into uh, these pseudo life forms. They don't, yeah, that they want, see, if it ever really comes out, they want to be able to say, whoops, we're sorry. It just got away from us with the GMOs. You know, we didn't intend but this is an intentional, weaponized little guy who comes in three shapes uh, with a hook, uh, with a bulb at the end, and I'm told that's the DNA. Uh, all, uh, now, this is from a scientist in Canada. I have to go with him. Um, and then with a, just a straight. So they don't meet the criteria whatsoever of what is agrobacteria, but that's okay. Um, the first gentleman that you mentioned, the research doctor, who talked about the fungal component, I'm very clear that that may be true uh, because we have a definite fungal, uh, very a tenacious fungal component in this that I'm still looking at and trying to culture. Uh, I will say, Dr. Mike Castle told me, and this is a mind blower, that there's a genome inside of this uh, filament, inside of these pseudo life forms that can only be found in, in, the, um, in the mouth of a serpent. So that puts a whole nother spin on this. Oh, yes. They do, yeah, they do act yeah. very snake-like. I, um, I wrote about this in that uh, Arizona Skywatch paper. I uh, have a, I call him my reluctant shaman because uh, he really he doesn't <laughs> want to. But I asked him if he could design a poultice for me that would draw them out where I could study them because in my case, I pushed them out aggressively, but they came out on my back. And, and that, that worked very well for Clifford Carnicom and his sampling and his microscope work, but it didn't help me very well because it was very hard to get to. So he designed a poultice, which I will not share with you because it was one of the most painful experiences of my life, on my forearms. And at first they swole up and, and nothing could touch them for weeks and weeks. But then, all of a sudden, voila, I had a forest of these things on my arms, easily extracted, easily seen with the naked eye with a, with a tweezer. So I've gotten to really study these guys right out of the, you know, the medium, which is me. Um, and they do. They, wow. they rise. They twist and turn. Very serpent-like in their behaviors. Um, they also, we know, will be attracted to, and this is what we talk about later, the at-home test, in case you think you're sitting in the catbird seat and none of this is in you, um, they will go toward things that they are attracted to and they will, conversely, they will run away from. And you can feel them uh, and see them do that from things they don't like, like um, red laser light. They don't like that. They, they are hivers. They will hive and... Mm, People will say they feel them. This is the old, uh, I don't know if they have it down there, Rose, but in the United States, all of a sudden, we started seeing commercials for restless leg syndrome. You know, did you feel like ants were running up and down under your skin? Well, that's these guys. Uh, and they do, and they move around. Um, so that's where the pseudo life form comes in, because they have movement, they have animation, they have a pretension to being something organic and living, but they're not. So they're very oh, unusual and, and sorry. On the on that um, thing as you you brought that up, uh, Doctor Scott, we've got a question from the chat room. 
and and again, I'm relating this back to what was happening to our own bodies during the prior to the Christchurch quakes with the uh, heart frequencies. When people live away from electromagnetic energy, is there a difference in response in the fibers? Absolutely, but it's almost it's getting more and more. You'd have to go live in the Amazon rainforest, I think, with the Indians down there. Uh, I don't know about where you are, but towers are going up here, sprouting up like mushrooms. They're everywhere, and every time I turn around, there's another one. Uh, and now we have these things called smart meters. Yes. They're put on everybody's house um, that are really horrific. So just in case you were smart enough not to have all the electronics in your home where they could bring the frequencies in, because this whole thing is frequency-based, and if you want me to, we can go there too sometime. But... Um, it's very hard to get away, but I did have a recent experience where I absolutely can tell you the fact of it because there are three. I live on an Indian reservation, and there's a reservation next door to me, and there's a huge mountain range, and all of a sudden three huge towers went up, and we were told they were uh, Wi-Fi, broadband, all that. And that's when the ringing in my head started, and my joints started to hurt and ache. All these things began to happen. Well, we had a huge fire out here recently, huge, the largest ever in the state of New Mexico. And uh, I got up in the middle of the night, you know, we were all on tinder hooks, wondering if we are going to have to evacuate, and I noticed, I, I was astounded, it was like every bit of that had left my body. I was strong, I was myself from the good old days, and I was like, holy cow, you know, what's going on here? And it was the middle of the night, I didn't know, but I thought, I'm just going to stay up. I haven't felt this good in so long. I'm going to stay up. What is this? What's happening? I didn't know. Finally, around 5.30, I couldn't stay up. I fell asleep or 5, 5.30. And when I woke up that morning at 6.30, it was all back. And I thought, what happened? Well, I found out that the fire had reached close to those towers, and they shut them down. They shut them down for a couple of hours. So I had very personal... Uh, <laughs> dramatic experience with what happens when you're not being shot with those frequencies. This whole thing is frequency based. The whole thing, A to Z, is frequency based. I did not know that, and I was telling CC, my friend who brought me to you, um, a while back that what happened when I started publishing papers and talking about working with Clifford, this gentleman called me. And he said, um, and I cannot use his name, I promise that. But he was involved in some of the original design back before the first Gulf War. And I asked him why he called me. He said, well, you don't have it. <laughs> you, you don't have it. But, you, you, you know, there's a nail there, and you're hitting the hammer all around it. So I'm going to fill you in. And he said, it's all about frequency. And I, I, I don't, he might as well have been speaking Turkish to me. I did not know a thing about what that meant. And so I've had to take a crash course and really pick a lot of brains to understand what a lot of people already knew, Royal Rife and many others, that we are totally frequency-based beings. And they know the frequency of every organ, every everything in us. Of course, now with that said, different people, this is where it gets really interesting, Different people vibrate on different frequencies. We know that when people are in prayer and meditation and in that state, they are their whole brainwave, everything is a different frequency than somebody who's angry and yelling 